oftentimes when it comes to us talking about foreign women, it's a lot of cheap shots. It's a lot of below the belt insults. And it's not really something that's rooted in things that are of substance, especially when it came to men exploring different options. A lot of the times we would say things like, oh, that's because y'all are broke and y'all are the rejects. Nobody wanted y'all anyway. And those women over there, that they're only dealing with you because they're in poverty. Men innately, I don't know if it's right or wrong, we look for somebody like a mother. We look for somebody that's gonna cook, it's gonna take care of, it's gonna clean. Yeah, but y'all want me to mother you and you, and that's it, okay? Like, that's it, like, y'all gotta pick one. Like, I can't be your mama and your freak. Like, y'all want too much from a woman sometimes, let's be real. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's, that's crazy, you said it. It is crazy, it sounds crazy. But it's always it. been like that. Yeah, it's, and it's still crazy, that don't make it not crazy. But if it's not crazy, then why does it work in every other non-matrix-minded country? Why does it work? You gotta ask her. the travel OG, and I traded in my Hollywood lifestyle for the sexy beaches of Pattaya, Thailand. Zoom to Thailand with your man, Richie Matt, the travel OG. What up, Zoom Troll? Just when you thought it was over, I gotta drop a few more jewels from this amazing video I did with the quiet husband, the expressive wife, the married couple, and the beautiful Thai lady. Believe it or not, this conversation went on for over two hours. I didn't realize how deep the conversation had gotten and how much more I gotta show you guys. At some point, the quiet man is gonna talk, but at this point in the conversation, the expressive wife was still holding court. Why does it work? You gotta ask her. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna ask you because we're from Africa. It's traditional in Africa as well. Let me tell you. Well, depending on where you're from, because there's a, there's some other. There's, you know, Africa's a big place, and there's right. some there's some tribes in Africa where the woman have two husbands. So you gotta let's be. Let's well, well, let's talk about that. How's that working out? You gotta love it. She is so fast thinking on her feet. Even though she's pulling out outliers, she's stating facts. In Africa, there are a few tribes where women have more than Hi, one lady. husband. My name is Nelly, and I am the world record holder woman in this area with three husbands. I work as a car dealer. I get them from Dubai and sell them in my country. I have lived with these three men as my husbands for three years. One example is the Maasai tribe in Kenya and Tanzania. In Maasai culture, it's not uncommon for a woman to have multiple husbands known as palandry. Living with three men makes me feel very happy. And I can confirm that my men are also happy because they have everything they want. And I'm sure they wouldn't cheat on me because I believe I satisfy their needs. If any of them asks for something, I give it to him because they're often unemployed. Yet, I have a permanent job. All four of them live in the same house, but each man has his bedroom, and the woman has her bedroom. My name is Hassan, and I am Nelly's husband. After my elder brother died, I remained here to look after the children he had with Nelly. After that, she brought other men. So we all live here without any problems and love each other. Now this is interesting. Not only is this woman holding down the entire household, she's holding down all three bedrooms. Link in the description if y'all want to see the whole video. But I know what y'all want to know about. Patrons and subscribers, here you go. Seeing how they live would make you wonder what happens during intimacy time. As for intimate time, we have no problem. As a man with many wives' plans, so do we. Each has his bedroom, and the wife also has her bedroom. So when she needs one of us, she calls them and meets him in her bedroom. Or she might come to our room if she wants. Or if one of us wants her, he goes to her room. So we are happy. We don't have any problem, because we're all her men, and we've never met in the bedroom at the same time yet. Yet? Does that mean it might? Anyway, let's get back to it. And she satisfies all of us. These young men, who seem to be the same age, live in this beautiful city. Being a woman and marrying many men is uncommon in this area and this country. Their neighbors are so used to them that they don't seem bothered even when walking on the street. Now, is it me, or am I just tripping? But you can clearly tell of the three which one her favorite is. The dude with the slacks on and the white shirt. That's who she hangs with the most. Shout out to Afromax for putting this together. Make sure you guys check the link in the description to watch the entire episode. But the point is, these are outliers. 
Outliers are data points that deviate significantly from the majority of data. But when I tried to press her on this issue, she switched topics mid-sentence. And this is what makes her so good. She would make an excellent attorney. They, what they seem to be doing pretty fine to me. Okay. Shit, still exists. Right. Okay, but, the point, but, but, the, but the point I'm making is it's not natural. Like, for instance, if you had two husbands and you got pregnant, who's the daddy? It would always make sense for it not to feel natural to the person that's getting all of the things. No, but man. it was time for Sunita Kamari to wed. Her family, like many in India, made arrangements. Sunita has not one husband, but three, all brothers. What must her life be like? In fraternal polyandry, a family picks a wife for its oldest son. The marriage can also include his younger brothers. They don't have to join in, but most do. Tolerance is very important. The wife has to understand everything. The older brother's nature, the younger brother's nature. If the wife is smart, she will take turns each night. Take turns with three brothers every night? Now you guys know good and damn well this type of behavior would not fly just about anywhere in the world. But to prove her point, she agrees with polandry behavior. They, they seem to be doing pretty fine to me, shit. Okay. It still exists. Right. Okay, but the point, fine, but the, but the point I'm making is it's not natural. This is the problem with Matrix thinking. It's about being right in that very moment versus what's usually best for us. So you were against feminism even going into college? Always, always. I always was like, I've always been a woman. My life's only been easier as a woman. I don't understand what all these women are crying and shitting about. And to your point about the women not really getting a legacy, I would say that women need to understand that you don't need a legacy like a man. Your legacy is your family and your family that you bring, that you raise and your children. That's the legacy that women need to understand is important. You don't need to have a legacy like a man. Women need to stop trying to become men because they can't become men and they're only going to fail at it. And when they try to become men, they become only fans, sell their bodies online. <laughs> and guess what? One day you're going to get old. You're going to get wrinkly. You're going to become like an old, miserable hag. And you're like, hey, so you'll be childless, husbandless. You eventually will want a husband. You will. And one day you're not going to be able to have kids and you're going to wish that maybe I didn't spend my whole life trying to be a boss babe. And maybe I should have just, you know, done what society tells me not to do and got married and actually found a man. It will, it will always make sense for it not to feel natural to the person that's getting all of the No, I'm not, but what do you mean? Y'all okay. get all the benefits. Y'all are the women. Y'all get all okay, of the you benefits. Gotta you act like every day of the week, somebody trying to beat me up or <laughs> me or No, I'm acting like, like you, gotta, I'm act you gotta protect me one time out the year, maybe once in our whole marriage. But that one so time that can, can you save your life. Never this guy was supposedly beating up on his girlfriend, and unfortunately for him, he ran into a jujitsu brown belt, and the rest is history. Baby. You're not my baby. You a you lucky I'm not the type to fuck you up. 29-year-old Louise was challenged by a 27-year-old student, Nathaniel, in a boxing match. In the match, Louise deliberately chose to go up against a man. How did it finish? Of course, she got punched several times and fell down. However, Louise said she's thankful for being punched in the face by a male contestant. She said, From the start, we were made aware that we would be treated as equals to the men and that there would be no changes, allowances, or exceptions for any of us. I had to do it, and it was just another task to me. I would have been disappointed if Nathaniel had held back. I'm thankful for how things turned out. You know what? I've come to the conclusion that they just don't get it. They are so spoiled in the Matrix and so well provided for that it's just normal to them. They don't understand. If we stopped doing all of this, they would be like fish out of water. But they don't understand because they don't have to. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta protect me one time out the year, maybe once in our whole marriage. But that one so that time can, that you can never, save your life. Never gotta wash no damn dishes, you crazy. I didn't say that. Why, why, you, why you put words in my I didn't say that never wash no dishes. So I said traditional roles. Right, but that's what that means, traditional roles. Cook, clean. Take care of the kids. Now, yeah, that's fine. If that's is that a have, bad thing? If that's all you have to do. See, the issue is a lot of times, most most families now, the women are also in the workplace. I get so they're that. also working just as hard as you're working. You look around the city here, you see all these buildings go up. These men, they're doing impossible things. They're under the streets, working on the sewers. They're up on the power lines in the storms and the, and the rain. They're keeping this impossible infrastructure functioning. This thing that works in a miraculous manner. I get so they're that. also working just as hard as you're working. And you still want to come home and do the other 100% of the work? That is not fair. They work themselves to death. And often, literally, the gratitude for that is sore, sorely lacking, especially among the people who should be most great. They take everything they have for granted, failing to understand entirely that there's a massive infrastructure of 
unbelievably hardworking, good right there. solidly laboring, working class men breaking themselves in half on a regular basis, making sure that everything that always breaks works. You still want to come home and do the other 100% of the work? That is not fair. Okay, but let me tell you what else isn't fair. Let's talk about men that are successful, right? Men that are successful have wives that have maids, that have people to clean up after them, they have nannies, they have all of that stuff, and they don't have to work. So what are we talking about here? We're what, talking what about you? happiness. So if you're a man with money, what tends to happen is a man with money First of all, they not ever thinking about the fact they want your time and they want your they want your time, they want your attention, they want your affection. Because I don't have to work, maybe I don't want you to have to work either. I want you to be right here with me so we can go and enjoy this life. They're not worried about this little money they pay. They they that is a that that is something they want to do. They want to take care of you. All right, that is different to a man with real money and a man who act like he got some money. It never ceases to amaze me how women think they can tell men what a man wants or thinks. They don't even understand that whether a man has all the money in the world or no money in the world, the primary feelings of men is all the same. We don't care about your degrees or what kind of car you drive or how much money you have in the bank because it's not ours. What do you suggest the women in the West do if, you know, everyone's advice is for men in the West to look elsewhere for a wife? What happens to all the women in the West then? Well, that one study we referenced was said by 2030 or something, 50% of women will be without a man. So that's that's the direction we're heading because two, two part of the problem. The men that are looking for those traditional values are starting to go overseas. And then two, the other half of the men are just checking out completely. They don't want to deal with women at all. So this is going to be a big issue that women are going to deal with in the future. Women are doing better in this society than in previous societies. So while it's your opinion that this is an example of devolving, for instance, I'm really happy I had this option and now I make seven figures and I'm able to have all the time, money and freedom that I enjoy. So for me, it was a good thing. But I mean, it's also true that women in average, like especially for white women, the rates of depression, are they're really skyrocketing, right? More women than ever have clinical diagnoses, uh, whether that's depression, anxiety, and they're medicated. So I think it, we can say that, yeah, obviously women have made a lot of grounds in terms of economics and finances, but I feel like it has come at a cost. For overall work-life balance, which yeah. women purport to be way less happy about than men on average. Yeah, women are very good in high school, then they go to college, they're very good in college. They nail their damn grades, they do their studying, they ace their LSAT so they're smart too. Then they go off to do their articling and they're really, really good at it. And then they get offered an associate position and they're really, really good at it. And then by the time they're 30, they make partner. And let's say they're in high pressure, high paying jobs, $250,000 a year, $300,000 a year, $500 an hour. Okay, what's your life like? You work all the time, 70 hours a week, 75 hours a week, flat out. And you can say all you want about the fact that women have a difficult time with that because it's a male dominant patriarchy. Any female lawyer who's hit 30 and is a partner that has any sense at all knows that's complete bloody rubbish. It's market determined right to the core. What happens to the women when they're in their 30s? They all leave the high end law firms, why? Because who in their right mind would want to live like that? There's a list of jobs that men should not do, especially grown ass men, okay? For one, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. Matter of fact, any fast food restaurant, if you think that you're a grown ass man working in a fast food restaurant is okay, something is wrong with you, all right? But once you're a grown ass man, you do not need to be working in any fast food restaurant or any retail restaurant. I got a question where you work at. And for you high value men that think that it's high value to work for the city, <laughs> let me tell you something, you're absolutely wrong, all right, okay? You guys need to go get some real careers, okay? Become an entrepreneur or something, all right? Own a Lamborghini or something like, all right? You're low value, all right? And if you want a high value woman like me, you need to switch your career path. Social media now has it where any dumbass can get in front of a camera and have an opinion, including me. <laughs> but putting down a man for making an honest living where he's paying his fair share of taxes to keep the infrastructure going, and then on top of that, putting him down for having a city job? Does that include police, firemen, people who pick up the trash, people who keep the infrastructure going? What about the military? Does that stand for them too? Does this woman have kids? Imagine how confused her kids would be. Would she put her own children down for being a school teacher or a nurse? 
It's off the chain in the Matrix. Y'all better wake up and get on. And if you can't, I'm going to do everything I can to keep you inspired. Right? You got some women, like real shit, that hate black men. You hate everything about me. I'm a god. I'm beautiful. I walk in some rooms, and I get around certain black women, and I start talking. They can't stand me. Black men are the only race of men that gets publicly disrespected by their women. You're not attractive to me. For instance, if you come home and, and to a fucking filthy house every day, I can imagine that not being attractive. Absolutely. And you not wanting to have sex with Absolutely. her. Absolutely. But, but and what, I think that you have every right to be like, you know what, baby, this ain't working. But what if the man came home to a spotless house? You you worked okay. every day and he had the house spotless and he cooked dinner for you. You if would if say- I, If I'm happy, if I'm happy, then I don't really see a problem with it, but I got it, but you got Come on, come no, on. I, mean, I don't find it, it's not really for me, but that's me personally. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there's nothing wrong with men that stay at home, that, you know, who are the stay at home dads. I don't personally think there's anything wrong with that. That's just not the man that I want. I was just about to say. And I think that's why she said it depends. It depends, I, I would say depends. That's why she Do you said notice that. how it always depends? It's never this or that, it depends. You understand that? When a man sees a woman being violated, he doesn't go, well, it depends on what she did wrong. He jumps into action. We'll worry about the rest later. There's something in a lot of men which is like a white knight thing where it's like told never to hit a woman. In fact, I think women have certain privileges on the street, for example. Let's say you're walking in some bar or nightclub district and a guy comes up to you and slaps you across the face. There are totally strange men that will intervene on your behalf and essentially be your bodyguards for free that will defend you. However, if I just get slapped in the face by some dude and he starts trying to fuck me up, nobody's coming to save me. But for women, it depends. Oh, that, that, that's so what? So what depends? So the man that oh, cleans up depends, depends <laughs> on the type of man that you're looking for, right. and if you meet the type of man that's looking for you, right? And that has to be what you both are looking for for it to work the way you want it to work. Right, but you got to understand, successful man has a, a mind state of the woman that they want, and you got to remember, the higher up we go in rank, the less we got to put up with. Yes, and the thing is, nobody's expected. We know that. That's what I just said. I just said, yeah. if you do all that, baby. What you need? Give me that foot. <laughs> what you need, baby? What do you want, honey? Yeah, so it what you want? But how long does that last? Yeah, as long as I don't have shit to do but think about you and take care of you until the day we die. But, but how long is that when you can say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm die. taking half your shit and I'm gone. That's different. That's different. That's different. Do you see how they both tried to sweep? How easy it is for a woman to take half your money under the rug? Five seconds before that, they're willing to rub your feet because you are financially stable. But when they get tired of rubbing your feet and it comes time to taking half of what you earn, that's different. The reason why young men especially are hesitant to get married is because there's for a lot of men they don't see any benefit from it you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage if someday she could say you know what i'm not really feeling this anymore i'm going to divorce you but you're still going to be responsible for paying for me okay. for the but that's the she option that you guys have that's the that's the option you got that's the no but uh -huh. that's the option you guys have you but guys but can say is, like, okay. like she said you have to have that ground rules non-negotiable like kind of discussion before you even get into a relationship right. But if it were that easy, it would not be the highest divorce rate in the world. But it is that easy. Where it, no, the thing in America. The thing is, it could be that easy. You're from Jamaica. I'm going to get to you next. Uh, you don't even think like that. You weren't raised like that. I'm, I'm, you're next. It could I'm going to let her finish and you're it next. It could be easy, but the issue is, is the right conversations are not being had. And that's people's problem in general. The lack of communication. That's everybody's problem. Okay? Perfect. And that's everybody's problem. So it's not, I'm attracted to you, you attracted to me, and we try to collide and bring things together. And the root of who we are, what we look like long term, exactly. is not being discussed. Yeah. And then today, I'm pissed about this, but I ain't even said nothing to you. I expect you to do it, I expect you to know, but we never even had a conversation about it, right? So you have expectations on me to come home to a spotless house with, with the food cooked and all this stuff. I have expectations expectations of you to not cheat, not to lie, to, to, to make sure I'm taking care of financial. What if those are the, the, the things that we both have, but nobody said it. The conversation they had. We need to figure out how to communicate and understand one another better. We're looking at things from two completely different lenses because you're a man and I'm a woman. We have different mentalities. It's not even just like me and you watching something. Just the fact that 
you're just wired completely different. Absolutely. And this is where I, I believe women are smarter than men. And you can get mad at me, but I really do. Women are smarter than men. Because they know how to manipulate the shit out of us. Well, it's, I feel like it's a part of that uh, emotional intelligence that we have. I don't know if that's intelligent or emotional. I'm going to say emotional intelligence. Yeah. I'm going to say emotional intelligence. And I don't mean that we don't cry and shit like that. We're not emotional people. I mean, like, we know how to... We are better at regulating our emotions and identifying our emotions. Men have... Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> men tend to have two kind of things going on. Either you happy or you mad. When your feelings hurt, you're mad. Right? When you're embarrassed, you're mad. With all these things, everything is anger if it's not good. Okay. 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 So we have that. We, we, we're not like that. Okay, hold Amazing. on. Well, I got I to gotta push back on that. You do understand when y'all sad, y'all cry. Yes. When you're happy, you cry. But they're happy too. And when you're angry, you cry. When you're sad, you cry. When you're happy, you cry. And when you're angry, you cry. Is that, is, that, is that true? What's more dangerous, though? I was, just, well, you, you moving the goalpost. So what I'm saying is, is that every woman is different. You may like that docile, sweet, cute. That girl is typically going to be a little bit more emotional than a woman like me. That's not true. Because regular women get married every single day. Regular grown, grown women. And when I say grown, uh, 35, 40 plus, and it's a lot of it is based off of your demeanor and your attitude. I don't know why y'all keep leaving that out. Your demeanor, your attitude, whether you sweet spirited, whether you are a nurturer, your ability to continue to add value into our lives, submissive, like it's not just that one aesthetic nurturing. No, it's the way that you talk. Your attitude is everything. I don't think I would be able to do things that I do these days like a hundred years ago. And with that, women become more masculine. So since men don't want the masculine traits, and I don't think that most women want the feminine traits, why would you continue to orient and move society towards this, where women are gaining more masculine traits just in lieu of the fact that they have to go provide? Does that seem like sensible policy to you? Independence. So the feeling that you have the freedom to do what you want to do, not depend on a man, mm -hmm. is intoxicating. It's freeing. Okay, because they, you know, they come with different things. So it depends on what you want, you know? Like you can't, I can't beat a bulldog all day at work or within my business and come home and get on my knees and submit to you. Like that's just not gonna happen. That's my point. Men are simple. We want three things. Feed us, uh, help uh, us, we know, we know. and give us the fuck remote we control. Know this. So if you already know this, then what is the problem? Because y'all ain't giving us the fuck we want. And y'all ain't gonna just get everything. It ain't gonna work like that. <laughs> <laughs> it don't work like that. Dude, what, you want, what, is, what I want. No. What is everything? Okay, okay what do you guys want? Though, That's what I'm about to ask. I, listen, I'm fine. So don't ask me. You gotta ask. The, you gotta ask the woman that don't got what she want and don't got what she needs. You gotta ask. That's the what I mean by complicated. Because I gave you, you three things men want. That. You go. We all know that. What do women want? Respect, mm -hmm. admiration, and loyalty. Mm -hmm. You didn't mention anything like financial. You didn't I'm, mention anything stability. You didn't mention none of that. Oh yeah, it's some good sex. <laughs> well, we we might want a little bit more. Some good sex. Yeah, it's a money. Yeah, damn. Can a bitch not have to work? Okay, like, so what else? You want, nice. you want protection. You want a strong man that's going to protect you. Yes. You want a man that's going to challenge you and not let you run him over. Yes. Okay. So you guys are different than us. And you guys, and, okay. and you guys, and let me tell you, you be honest. I don't want to be like that. Be, be honest. Stress. You guys will test us when we don't even know we're being tested. You guys will do something to see what our reaction is going to be. And you guys will test us, and we don't even know. We may have failed to pass the test and don't even know. I don't play games. Oh, come on. I'll, I'll, give I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'm going to ask you a question and see what you're going to say, but that's yeah. just like. I don't play games. Oh, I'll come play. on. I'll give, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll ask a question and see what you're going to say, but I don't play games. That's my yeah, point. I mean, but we doing that all day. If we in a relationship. But why? I don't, I don't want you. Men are simple. So you're not gonna. You just have certain things you're gonna ask me to see what I'm gonna say. No. You're not gonna. If you Men if you want a woman like that. that don't go out, right? If, if really what you want is a woman that don't go out, you're not gonna test and see if you say, yeah, baby, you can go just to see if she gonna go and take you up on the offer or she gonna stay here. Not really. Men are pretty much. Like men that. pretty much say what they want. Like, that's my point. I I'm don't trying to make. I have permission to post this, right? I just wanna make sure. Oh, yeah. Can, okay, I just wanna make sure. Shout out to the sister from the interview. I never said her name because you guys were going so hard in the comment section. But I found out she has her own YouTube channel. So you guys go over there and show her some love. Go over there and subscribe. Hit the like button for her. Her channel is called Behind These Lips. So if you happen to see this video behind these lips, I would love to bring you back on my channel and I would absolutely go on yours. I'll do whatever I can to help get your channel monetized. I'll also leave a link in the description for your channel as well. She gave a very classy clap back 
and she looked beautiful in it. So shout out to her. And it's here, y'all. The Save Yourself Batman merch is here. The golf shirts are here. Make sure you guys hit me up. Email zoomthetyland at gmail.com. We got golf shirts. We got t-shirts. We got bucket hats. We got it all, y'all. Only thing I'm going to tell you up front, the shipping to the Matrix is expensive, yo. Like, literally, like, 60 bucks just to send something. That's just the shipping. That's the way they get you here in Thailand is the, is the shipping and handling. So uh, just know that, man. If you guys can afford the shipping fee, I'll gladly send it to you. If not, you can get the merch when you get here. You dig? It's time to activate your passports and get ready for Zoom Fest 2024. 12 days, 11 nights, two cities, one island, and the time of your life. You better eat your weenies and get plenty of rest because this is going to be non-stop action from the time you get off the plane. Zoom Fest 2024 is made for my Zoom tribe of subscribers and Patreon members. Non-stop events, a private yacht party, a fantasy island party, dinner at the best restaurants, Tiger Park, temples, elephant sanctuary, celebrity golf tournament. We got the ballin' on a budget package, a no-frills package for those who just want to come and see what Thailand's about with non-stop events from start to finish. And if you can afford to step your game up to the next level, we got the hangover pack. The hangover pack is not for the faint of heart. And finally, we have the executive pack. For those who like to do things in style, have the best of the best, and keep certain things private. This package is designed for people who are used to riding first class, staying at the best hotels, eating at the best restaurants, and living in the lap of luxuries. Bring your friends, bring your family. Zoom Fest is for everybody with the right attitude and the right frame of mind. For more details, hit me up on the email, zoomtothailand at gmail.com. This event will be held December 2024. Limited packages available, so get your deposits in and let's begin. Consultations with all details will be included in the packages. No excuses, it's time to Zoom to Thailand for Zoom Fest 2024. 12 days, 11 nights, two cities, one island, and an unforgettable experience that no one's going to believe when you get back home. Questions will be answered at zoomtothailand at gmail.com.